wonderful listeners. Woo-hoo. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking It Down with Boston. I'm Trion, your second train to Boston and host of this podcast. And I am thrilled to have you join me today for a special edition. You see, the responses that we've received for our most recent episodes have been incredible. And I've received some fantastic questions from you, our amazing audience. And today, guess what? I'm going to address those questions head on, delving into the nitty gritty of what I consider goals and and efforts in achieving financial freedom, making your money work for you and embracing the consumer lifestyle. But you know what? Before we jump into these questions, I want to take a moment to (laughs) applaud you, each and every one of you, because in the midst of this holiday season, where many people I'm swept up in the excitement, and I mean excitement, of gift-giving, festive decorations, party dresses, you've chosen to prioritize your financial future. And so we absolutely want you to enjoy the holidays, you know, but it's, it is crucial to recognize the importance of the decisions we make during this season. Because you know what? Most people might not be paying attention to a budget right now. But you, 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 our amazing listener, you, you are actively seeking ways to not just talk about it, but to align your actions with your personal goals. So get ready to be inspired as we tackle your questions, not my questions, your questions. And I provide, hopefully, empowering answers, answers to help you navigate your goals, navigate the holiday season with financial wisdom. So let's make these intentional, goal-oriented decisions together. Let's buckle up as we continue on this journey towards financial freedom. And I'm totally excited. So much so that I I have your questions. I didn't want to miss them, so I'm going to look from time to time, but I want to go through each and every one of them or as much as I can in, in this window to answer one of the first questions I got was, what does it mean to become a prosumer in the context of personal finance? And I thought that was a really good question because I said, make it known, write it down, hashtag prosumer, I am a prosumer. And you guys did that. So becoming a prosumer, it it actually means a transitioning of your mindset from being a consumer where you consume to becoming a more proactive and informed person, a more active and informed person about our finances. It involves making what I consider, you know what, intentional choices. We make decisions that sometimes it's on a whim, but intentional choices about how we spend our money, how we save our money, and how we invest our money. And that's where the goal of getting me to become, you know, both a savvy consumer and a proactive producer. Producer of what, Cleon? Producer of making your money work for you. Make, producing more money. So it's a change in mindset. When you say I'm a prosumer, it's because you're not, no longer spending just to spend. You're saying, when I give you my money, what am I getting in return for it? So if if there's anything that I say that you need more clarification for, feel free to reach out. A lot of you have reached out, not just in the message, but you've also reached out in private messages, and and I'm going to do my best to address this today. Another question that we got was, how can I make my money work for me instead of just saving it? (laughs) When I saw that question, I laughed. Because that's something I spent trying to convince my two children. Because when they finally started saving, they felt as long as their money was in the bank and they could see it. Anybody listen to the first episode of all that say, cash is king. That's all she wants to do is see it there. But you know what? Banks are lending institutions. Say that with me. Lending institutions. They are not there to get you rich. They are not even there to elevate your savings, not even a little bit. And when you lend, 
when you hear that word lend, you're automatically knowing that you're giving interest to someone for them lending you their money. So how can you make your money work for you? Some key things would be, one would be investing. That's a key strategy to make your money work for you. And that is something that I would advise you to just pick up and throw in. But we're going to talk step by step. I'm going to share with you what I know, even though I'm not a financial advisor. I'm going to get some financial advisors on here that can give you some advice that you can look at and, and, and research for yourself. And then I will even have sessions where we set up, open up accounts and, and we proceed and we and learn to learn about the products that we use so that we are not just what consumers but prosumers. Which one of us in here has an iPhone? Anyone in my audience, raise your hand. Oh boy, look at those hands. Look at those hands. Now, what would you say if I said, hey, you know what? What about if I had invested in in, 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 in Apple? You know what? That's not a bad idea. So we're going to learn the importance of investing and investing, starting with the company that we use on an everyday basis. Okay, so investing is one key strategy to help you make your money work for you rather than just keeping it in a bank. Another question that we got was, is it possible to get something back when you're spending your money? And the answer is, Absolutely yes. How do we do that, Cleo? Number one, when you're spending your money, you make sure that the credit cards you have is giving you a reward for your money. Let them show you how valuable you are to them. Whether if you travel a lot, you need a, a credit card that gives you points towards travel or a credit card that gives you points towards cash back or a credit card that gives you, you know, a, a number of points. If you use it at restaurants, you get double the points. Or if you use it at gas stations, do your research. Do your research and find out how you can get a card that gives you cash back or points or whatever you want from it. So that's one way. Another way, and I had this discussion today, with my best friend, because she's getting ready to travel for work. And I said to her, do you have a frequent flyer number for that airline that you're traveling on today? And she said, no, because I only travel with them once in a while. And I'm looking at her like she's crazy. I said, you need to go back and listen to that last podcast again. That's, that was my response to her. Because another way to be a prosumer and make your money work for you, get a frequent flyer number for every airline that you travel on. When we were going A, you would have them. I don't care if we flew this airline once a year, I got points. I don't care how often we do it because you gonna do it enough times because a lot of a lot of times the airline the points don't expire. So if you travel once or twice a year and then you go up and look up flights, you might Get one, one special with 12500 to get a free one-way ticket some days. That just saved you some money. Start telling yourself, I'm a prosumer and my money must work for me. Another way to get something back for your money, believe it or not, is educating yourself. Educating yourself. Learn about financial empowerment. Invest time in listening to podcasts like this one, reading financial empowering books. And I'm going to share some of those with you. Because what you get from the, the money you invest in yourself, and I say invest because you will have a huge return on investment and your money will be working for you over time when you educate yourself and become more knowledgeable about what you can do to become financially free and savvy. So that's another one. Let's see. Ooh, this is good. How can I avoid paying interest on my credit cards? And, and you know what? This answer is actually quite simple. You pay, you charge, and there's a due date for your card. 
and what is due you pay. But there's a little catch in there because Number one, you want to start with trying to make sure you're, you're being a responsible user of your card. So don't ever go over 30% of your available credit. After that, you bring your credit rating down. And it's not just a one card. The, the credit rating is consistent of all the balances that you have on your credit card. So you have five cards at $1,000 each. That means you have $5,000 available credit to you. And you're going to try not to spend over $1,500 on those different cards, 200 on this one, whatever the, the calculation may be, you're going to try not to spend more than $1,500 at a time out of the available credit that you have. So when you have your credit card and you use it, there is a total amount that you spent but the total amount that is due is within a 30-day period, a 30-day window. So it, only what you spent from January 1st to January 30th, that's due the, the, the following month. So when you look at your credit card statement, you would see the balance of what's owed, but you'd also see the total balance that's due for the month. And your goal is to avoid paying interest by paying all the amounts that are due within that period of time. If you're finding yourself where you have this big credit card balance and you can't pay the amount in full, you're setting yourself up for trouble. You're not actually setting yourself up, you're in trouble. Because the amount of interest that it charge you on credit cards, your balance to pay that off has extended so much more months because you didn't make that payment. So then you have to get in the habit of, you know what, this is exactly what I have to spend and I will not go over it. I will not go over it and be that discipline. It's called delayed gratification. Remember that term. Another question was, what are the benefits of living on a budget? Living on a budget, you know, it helps you gain control of your finances help you track your spending, allocate funds towards your goals, and you're able to, like, reduce stress. <laughs> that sounds crazy, but do you know much people get stressed out because of money? You're able to reduce stress. And I don't want, I don't want to sit here and lie to you. Listen, when I tell you that that was the, one of the biggest battles for LG and I, because he would be, honey, you need to write these things down. And I'm, I, I got so annoyed doing that. Until I, I, I said last time, I started looking at my credit card statement. That was writing it down enough for me. But if you, and you don't have to do nothing fancy. There are so many stuff out there. And I'm going to share um, on another episode some resources that you can tap into. But you could start, because I don't want anybody feeling you have to spend money right now to get out of debt. You don't. You get a pen and a paper. You write down how much money you get paid. Every two weeks, you write down the amount that you bring home and you write down your obligations on a, for a monthly basis. And you say, I have my mortgage or I have my rent. This is how much I'll allocate for groceries. This is how much I have to have for gas. This is how much I have for my car payment. This is how much I have for my telephone bill. Write down every single bill that you have. Write down the, the money that you have coming in and right off the bat, you'll be able to see what you have coming in and what you have going out. And then you can develop a plan as to how to tackle where you are to get to where you want to be. It is truly that simple. It starts with writing that budget down, writing down your goals, writing down your expenses and your projections and the money that you bring in. And then, you know, it's going to give you a clear idea. So, you know what? I need to decrease my expenditures. I went so far, I have um, Dish. I got, I used to have a cable company and then I switched to Dish, mainly because they offered me all the um, the channels that I needed to watch the college games, the SEC Network, the NBC, Long One, I needed all those channels. And then, now that Ali has finished, I still want those channels, but then I have to find a way. And I went through that truck park, um, the, you know, the channel guy, they call him up and they say, hey, I need to make some changes. Tell me what I can um, 
cut out. Tell me what I can do if I want to get rid of this, this, this. And I made some choices. And I think I got my bill down like $25. That might seem like such a little bit of money. Like, Cleon, did that really make a difference? $25 every month. Think about it. $25. Every four months, that's $100. Like, think about it. What would you do if you have an extra $100? You see, I said money is made in fractions. We make $25 make sound small. But it, uh, it adds up. It adds up. So when you have that budget, you're able to say, you know what? I don't need a part-time job to help me be able to apply, get some extra money to pay down on these bills, or I need to start looking at where I can cut. So a budget is extremely important. Um, it just says, how do I start with creating a budget? And I just told you, you don't have to go and look for anything outside. You can start with pen and paper. You can put it in Excel. You can write it down. But that is how it starts. That is how it starts. And don't wait till the new year to tell me that's when you're going to start your budget. Start it now. Because that's what's going to keep you on task with your budget as the end of the year. What steps can I take to become debt free? And, and I thought that's a really, really powerful question. Because as I said, just knowing that you're thinking about these things um, so close to the holidays, the first step again, write your bills down, map out your budget, decide what you can cut, where you can get rid of expenses, monthly expenses, take lunch to work. Like, Cleo, what does that have to do with me being debt free? It does. $20 a day for lunch, you work five days a week. If you have the weekends off, that's $100. Bingo, $100. If you spend $20 a day on lunch, five days, that's $100. Four, four weeks in a month, that's $100 a week. Four weeks in a month, that's $400. Think about that. Take your lunch. Take your lunch. I had that discussion with Lex. I said, Lexi, why are you seeing all these things on your credit card? Child, you don't do nothing else but eat out? But guess what I see her doing for the past maybe month and a half? She's taking her lunch. I said, Lord Jesus. It's making a difference. Take your lunch. Write your book, your bills down. Work on your budget and stick to it. Stick to it. Make some sacrifices. What can you live? What is a need versus what is a want? What is a need versus what it's a want? That's a decision you have to make. And it actually makes your choices a little bit easier once you have an understanding of that. Another question that we have here, what steps can I take to become debt-free? Prioritize your bills. Get the ones that give you the highest interest and start paying that out first. And once you get that payoff, guess what? That's extra money now you can put towards another bill. That's extra money you put towards another bill. Consolidate. There is um, a lot of credit cards, depending on you, what your credit score is. And, and this is just a side note, but you can go and register on Credit Karma. And they will give you an update um, about your credit score. Um, you can set goals as to how, you know, what you want to become. And they even help you, they monitor to make sure nobody else is, you know, can take no applications on your credit. And, and then they're actually able to actually make recommendations as to based on the credit you have now, different credit cards that you can get. And if your credit is good enough for certain cards, there are credit cards that you can get. And I'm a pro at this. Um, when I tell you I can speak for this, I'm a pro at this one, where you have credit cards that gives you balance transfer offers. So you might have a credit card that doesn't have a high balance or no balance at all. So I don't always close up my credit cards when they're, I don't actually, not, I shouldn't say I don't always do, I don't close them out. And then every once in a while, I'm going to get a letter in the mail that says, we're going to give you a 0% 
interest with a one-time 3% balance transfer rate. And if they're sending this to me December, I won't have to pay any interest on the remaining balance until December the following year. Sometimes you get it for 12 months, 18 months ahead. And guess what? Guess who takes advantage of that? Boy, I look at my credit card, and I'm like, you know what? I pay this every month, but this one will be tough this month. Or if I needed to get something um, in bulk and I know I have that offer, I would buy it on my credit card, and then I would go and transfer the balance, pay that one-time fee. It might be $100, depending on what it is, or 100 and something dollars. But I'm going to pay that fee, transfer the balance from one credit card to the next, and now I have a whole 18 months to pay that credit card off without any interest. And the one that would have cost me interest if I had not paid it in full is now free and clear. And then that gives you a chance to say, okay, Cleo, you just dodged that bullet. So don't spend anything else on this card that you can't pay. That's not on your budget. But those balance transfer offers, they are great if you use them the right way. Absolutely great. And I've done it a number of times. And, and I love it. Like, I love it. But you have to use it responsibly. You have to use it responsibly. So that's another way. Consolidating your debt, transferring it to, uh, uh, and taking advantage of a balance transfer offer. And, and those exciting things. How can I improve my credit score? Number one, stop applying for a million things because every time you have an inquiry on your credit, the score drops for a little bit. Number two, don't spend more than 30%. For good measure, make it 20, 25 of your avail total available credit. Three, pay your obligations on time. You miss that by a day, it impacts your score. Pay your credit cards, your loans, your bills on time. On time, not a day late, on time. That is huge. When you look at, at go on credit card and you look at the things that impact your score, it says late payments, um, um, usage of credit, um, they tell you the percentage of how your score is impacted. So you can improve that by paying your bills on time, reducing your credit card balances, and limiting new credit card applications, new credit applications, period, whether it's loans or credit cards. Limiting those. And check, I said it just now, check your credit regularly to make sure that no one interferes with it, no one opens things in your name that you didn't know about. This is important stuff, and, I, and I'm so happy we are doing it now to get you in that frame of mind and hopefully help you stay focused through these seasons. And then someone says, how can I start investing even on a modest income? You know what I did today, 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 today? I opened, well, then not open. I had a credit union account, which in the Virgin Islands, credit union for government employees. And I opened one, but I told them I didn't want to do direct deposit on that because it was just to put any little, maybe extra cash that I'll do my get from tips. I'll put there and just stash it away for emergencies. And then I got <laughs> a letter in the mail that said, your account has been in inactive for three day, three months or two months, which means I didn't walk in and give them any money. And then it'll be dormant. It'll be considered dormant and you have to pay a fee per day or per week or whatever, I, um, to keep it open. And I walked into credit union today, today, and I said, I would love to sign my credit union account. I said, it's already opened up for direct deposit. And guess how much I put in? As God is my witness, $20 big dollars every pay period. And I told the lady, I'll see you at the end of my reign in government, however many years, because I'm hoping not to go back and to touch it. $20. Why am I telling you all of this? Because it doesn't matter how modest your income is. We can make a decision 
to invest and to save. And I was so excited because we haven't talked in depth about investing, but I was so excited when I saw that question because that means your mind is already working. And I am telling you, last week I bought for Dante Flores. He's a three-year-old little boy. And I bought him $20, $20 $25 worth of Amazon. Can you imagine that? Amazon is $140, $148, I think, right now. And I put, I was able to put $20, a partial share of Amazon, in his account. And the next time I get another $20 or $25, I'm going to put it in Amazon again. Then he's going to be up $40 something dollars in Amazon. And I'm going to do that until I can buy him my entire share of Amazon. It doesn't matter how modest, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to look at different um, investment um, companies that you can use that allows you to do partial shares. And, 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 and I'm so excited. Like, I am so excited because you don't understand how this could change your life. So the person that asked, asked that question, congratulations. Your mind is moving even faster than my lips to speak. And I was so excited because I know that's something that has me, like, listen, <laughs> it don't matter where people put me and God gave me an opportunity to talk about investment, I'm going to do it. Not because I've made it that much in investing already or I've arrived, but because I see how it can change your life. I see how it can change your life. So that question, man, I was so fired up. Like, I was so fine. You should see my notes already on it. Not for today, but you should see my notes in preparation for when we talk about investing. So it doesn't matter how modest your income is. Set something aside. And if that means if you used to buy lunch five days a week and you start carrying your lunch and now you only buy lunch one day a week, that other money, put it towards a bill, but put some part of it, 20% of it, towards investing. It doesn't matter where you start. Never despise how to begin. Never, never. Modest or not, you can be an investor and a business owner. Believe it. Because when you invest in companies, you're part of the ownership. You're part of the ownership. So what was another question? The investing again. I think it was just two people asked about investing. And they wanted to know the ins and outs of it. And I can't go through all of that today. I am going to have a session. We're going to have someone on that can guide you on that. But investing is important. And you know, I tie everything, everything into God's principles for us because He is making this possible. And he says, and I, I, I went and looked specifically for two verses. I can tell you a lot of scripture verses, but I can't necessarily tell you the chapter and book that they're from then. <laughs> but I knew what I wanted to find, and I went looking for two today. Proverbs 21, 20, NIV version. It says, the wise store up choice food and olive oil for fools. Olive oil, but fools gulp their dumb. The wise store of choice food and olive oil, but fools gulp theirs down. What does that mean? That we, it's simply saying the value or showing us the value of wise financial planning. We mentioned that. She said that first thing on our podcast, the last episode. She talked about the Bible telling us to store up, store up the things that we need. And this is telling us the value of having wise financial planning and saving for the future. And, and it's emphasizing the importance of avoiding impulsive decisions, impulsive buying, impulsive shopping, and reckless spending. That's what it wants us to avoid doing. And this is in the Bible, guys. This is in the Bible. And the other verse says, the rich, Proverbs 22, 7, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is a slave to the lender. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. It's the importance 
of, of the consequences of debt, the importance of managing our finances responsibly and, and, and not becoming enslaved to financial institutions and to people that we have to borrow from and, and, and pay these huge, huge interest rates, usury, interest rates, high. So we have the principles to help us become debt free. The, the, the motivation to say, if God says that, we can do it. It's down to decisions. So this holiday season, get excited. You know, I've been telling people, I told one young lady today, I think her daughter is nine. Love my hair. I, I, I went um, during lunch and did my hair, and I'm so excited. But guess what I said to her? I said, you need to buy your daughter, if you are going to buy her iPad, buy her uh, one stock of Apple. And I made reference and I said, I bought Apple stock for Alexis and Aliyah and it was $118. $118 a couple months back. And today, I think Apple ended at $190. And they didn't buy all 10 shares one time. They only got 10. With the help of the Lord, they'll get more. But at $118, 10 shares over that period of time when they spent $1,180. And now at $190, if they were to take that money out, that $1,180 is now worth $1,900. And I said to her, tell me a bank, any bank, that you could put $1,100 in over a seven-month period, eight-month period, and they give you $700, over $700 worth of interest. And when any of you find that bank, you need me know. You send me a personal message to tell me which bank would do that. The person that asks about how can I invest in modest income, there is your answer. You can get so much more of a return on a modest investment than you can allowing your money to just sit in the bank. I'm not saying don't put money in the bank. I'm not saying don't put none away for emergencies and have a, 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 a something that you can touch readily available. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that if you want to be financially free, it will not come from holding all of your money sitting in a bank account. So I am so thankful for the opportunity to answer your questions and share my insight concerning those questions or you know, around those questions. And I looked, I made a promise at the beginning. I said, I will answer your questions, but I had all these questions about finances. And I'm like, you know what? This is a perfect time to have one of those question and answer, question and answer segment. And I hope you found it um, exciting. I hope you find the information valuable because I was excited to see your questions, not just because of the questions, but because of the time of the year that these questions were coming, because it showed that it's short the time that this podcast has been around, that it's already influencing you and changing your life. So I am thankful. I am excited. Um, I remember to like, subscribe, and share this podcast. And until I see you again on our next episode of Breaking It Down with Boston, I want you to stay safe. Stay focused and remember that I love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.